Hi, my name is Kitinji Murungi. I'm the team lead and uh, the project lead of uh, Smart Kibanda. Feel welcome to have a look at the work that we've done for the last uh, uh, more than six months. This work has really brought in a lot of um, uh, lessons, to specifically to the team, and also to myself as the lead or uh, as the team lead of this project. First of all, let me say thank you to our funding, uh, our supporters, uh, HSC site, and more importantly, specifically the Kenyan section uh, site group and uh, Exco for giving us an opportunity. To my name is Sally Musonye. Allow me to share my screen. So this evening we are going to look at implementation of IEEE HSC funded projects, basically on the best um, action plan that we can do to achieve ultimate uh, success on the project implementation. And uh, the right is a picture, a recent picture of what I do. I am an engineer at Kenya Power. I'm in charge of design and construction in Kitui County. So the second picture is a photo that we took when we were doing commissioning of the power network. We were doing a substation in Kitui, a 132 to 33 kV voltage. It was just like a part of the team that implemented that project. The reason why I shared the photo of this particular project and the team, we'll see the aspect of teamwork as we move along, regardless of uh, whether it's IEEE or in our careers, there is that importance of teamwork in achieving uh, some mantra's goal that at times we feel that we may not achieve and that is why that photo is there now when they were approving the funds they mentioned that they'll not uh, fund 5000 usd but instead we scaled down to a thousand usd for that we scaled down by reducing the number of schools to one and the number of stations to six because we had targeted to do six stations per school at a, at a I don't remember the actual cost, but you have to do 60 liter water tanks. One liter, one one tank capacity was supposed to be 60 liters to have six of them in five schools. So when we were being funded, we cascaded that down to one school to give us now the six tanks for one school. However, we got a challenge when it came to the aspect of cost. So what we did, we reduced on the tank capacity from 60 liters to 50 liters because of the aspect of the budget so in your case you had proposed let's say seven but you want to scale down and increase on the smartness that is also okay the other aspect was on the the tanks how they're made so this cost of fifty-five thousand was a complete set that you just pay you send logos it is delivered but we wanted something less Actually, the budget was 15,000 per tank, and we were being told 55,000. So what we did with the volunteers from JKU Arts, we went to Kariako and talked to those Juakali artisans. And the only difference was 55,000 was almost like a week's delivery. But for us to get something that was 
15,000 within our budget required more time in terms of fabrication, required the actual fabrication, and, uh, and uh, getting these items from different places to one person. So we went ahead to increase on our lead time to one month, such that we placed the order and gave that person one month to prepare. So by going to Career Core, we are able to engage now the local artisan to now fabricate this. We get the design, we get the colors of the tanks that we want, and now we tell him, now go to Kamkunji and buy this one and come and prepare. So that is how we are able we were able to now maneuver on the aspect of quantity and the aspect of budget. So we reduced the capacity from 60 liters to 50 liters. And when you do that, you have to indicate it in your report. You mentioned that our capacity will in, we know when you're doing the first report or the second, I think by the third report, we should have known who's supplying you what at what cost and what uh, give and take solution are you implementing so you need to indicate that in your report to hsc and mention for us we said we are scaling down from 60 liters to 50 liters but will serve the same purpose due to the aspect of budget so now that is what you can have when you're scaling down and have a smarter kiosk what is this aspect that is making it smarter that will now cost you an extra Maybe an extra installation so that advice it is allowable you can do that and just to ensure that you balance the aspect of cost and also meet what is intended the goal and communicate the same in good time yeah. so for us we had the hand washing stations we had reusable face masks we had a event banner we had an e-flyer and we had uh, branded t-shirts and liquid soap and trade so for the hand washing stations we used one supplier Karyoko. for the t-shirts uh, branding the banner and the e-flyer we used one supplier and uh, then for the uh, who was also doing the face mask and then for the liquid soap we used another supplier so we had uh, three suppliers to do this and just make sure that you don't have too many suppliers because of the of the aspect of follow-up. So for us, we had three suppliers. We just categorized that into three. But you just follow one person. If you have five items or if you have one item that is quite bulky, we just follow you on one. Yeah, if there is uh, any change in any aspect, you need to update your tracker. For instance, if my tracker said I'll have my and washing stations by April. Then COVID comes and I'm not able to do that and maybe have to postpone that to December. It is advisable that you also update your tracker to indicate that the lead time for this item has moved from point A to point B. So you need to also update your tracker as well. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is again Hilary. Uh, I'm really excited to be sharing with you a couple of knowledges that I have in the project management section. Uh, I'm purely a project management profession, uh, having having uh, you know managed to conduct some of the projects in in like energy and livelihoods, and I majored specifically in the, in community and in the area of conservation. So I think this is uh, something that is very close to heart because it's something I'm very passionate about. Uh, you know, share, doing projects, man, what you learn and what you meet down to the field, there are two different things, a couple of things that you come to change with your mind. I'm very happy to be part of this amazing project that means that improving the livelihoods of various beneficiaries to where we wanted to set up the Smart Kibanda. And in this case, you're talking about Oga and other vendors in our communities. Okay, my role here was to my role here in this in this whole project was to train or was to train or talk to or rather talk to students or participants uh, to equip the students with knowledge and understanding of what it takes to run or manage a successful project. 
and uh, how to plan for eventualities and mitigate the on the implementation of the project. Uh, and most of and most importantly, when it comes to closure of the project, we are able to also to check on how we should close the project and you know, uh, for example, like uh, uh, getting uh, writing down the lessons that we have learned all along the project and how we should do or do a retrospective retrospective meeting kind of and to understand what we should, should do better in the next uh, phase of the project. Uh, during our engagement sessions, we tackled the various various aspects from the inception and into the closure. And uh, during the sessions, we know we asked ourselves several questions. Number one, what do we want? Uh, who are the beneficiaries that we want to impact? And what impact do we want to see in the end? This was very uh, fundamental or important rather because uh, it uh, sets you know, a pace or a, or a trajectory or a strategy of how we are going to achieve those objectives. I will also start for the life cycle of the project, the, the needed skills and competencies of a project manager and what, is the, what are the skills that we are supposed to do for ourselves. And uh, lastly was you know, on how to design the project and uh, basically what are the needed processes of this particular management uh, of this project and coming up to coming to an end of this project i'm happy to be part of it and uh, i'd say you know bravo to the whole team uh, it's a very nice kibanda and i know our mama bogas will be able to to be helped or to you know with necessary tools to improve their livelihoods bravo moi santimitana thank you <laughs> I'd like to appreciate your invitation and uh, also the invitation uh, by Chris um, who approached me and uh, uh, also told me about this. So it's my always a pleasure for me to share the little knowledge that I have with uh, people who are interested in uh, listening, in hearing, in learning. I'll uh, briefly talk about uh, leader volunteering and leadership in general and uh, a bit about projects. Projects are a wide uh, topic, so I'll just touch a bit and uh, try and focus on how volunteering and leadership can uh, be effectively used when conducting this. Uh, that's the summary of my presentation. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I had done a, a brief bio, but uh, Didinji has gone through most of it. Uh, currently, I'm the secretary, as mentioned, of the Africa Council and um, also the founding chair of the Kenya chapter of the Communication Society. Um, not all volunteer activities are actually uh, or end up with a positive uh, outcome. There are some people who actually misuse others uh, while uh, using the term volunteering. They tell you they're giving you um, there's this common word that was being used uh, at some point for the by the creatives that uh, people are saying they're giving you exposure. So in the same way, there are people who may misuse volunteers. So it's actually important for you, since you're giving your time, you're giving your resources, your energy, to know where to give your time. So IEEE, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about IEEE um, since uh, we are IEEE, most of us, I believe, if not all. Um, so IEEE has a uh, quite a large number of volunteering opportunities. IEEE as an organization itself is an organization that is purely led by volunteers. We have around 400,000 members and all out of these about 90, you can say 98% are actually volunteers with the, uh, quite a minor um, number being staff members. So IEEE, what are the typical volunteering opportunities within IEEE that you can engage in as a member? And this does not uh, discriminate against the level of membership, whether you're a student or a professional member. Uh, one, you can participate in uh, projects at the local level, and these are not limited to planning meetings and activities. The people who plan this session are actually volunteering to, to do that. Um, first, in terms of leadership, uh, the times are changing and uh, 
leadership is not as it was traditionally. We are now going into a period where the future of work is uh, going to be working remotely, telecommuting. People are working from home. There are mobile offices and things like that. So maybe from your personal experience, um, our leader born, uh, and now that we are referring to you as a uh, uh, the leader in this case. Uh, were you born a leader? Did you actually develop the skills? Uh, how can you comment about that? So, uh, one, I feel it's uh, exposure. And two, it's also personal development. Once you get that opportunity, how you take it yourself and work with it. So, there are people who can be given the opportunity, but uh, they go through it and do it and uh, they don't like what they're doing. But if you like what you did, or even if you didn't like, but you see an area that you can improve on and you go about and work towards improving it, then you can definitely get better and better. And the more you put yourself out, uh, talked about volunteering, the more you volunteer, the more people see you and the more they give you those opportunities and those leadership uh, opportunities. So in terms of uh, pressure, one, you need to understand first where the pressure is coming from. Uh, what is causing that? Is it a deliverable that is delayed? Is it something that cannot be done and you need to do it? Is it uh, a, an error that has been caused by one of the team members or by yourself that is causing this pressure? So it's always good to at least first identify what is the cause of this. Then once you have identified, always take time, not be in a rush. Take time to try and see how can you sort this out if it's something that does not give you the comfort of having time it may be an, a, a, a fault that needs to be sorted out immediately at least take even if it's a minute or two to just reflect on it and uh, try and see how can we go about what was the cause how can we address the cause of this because addressing the cause will always help to prevent it from happening again and also give you that confidence or that uh, give the team that confidence that this issue is not something that uh, is going to recur. Sometimes you may not be able to resolve it immediately, but you may look for a temporary uh, measure to um, at least calm the situation down. So you need to always uh, be that flexible and uh, Communicate with your team. Sometimes you may not have the idea of how to go about it, but a team member might have an idea, which if you brainstorm together, you can actually come up with a solution that uh, will resolve that situation that is causing that pressure. So um, uh, pressure is something that is uh, normally there. It's expected as a leader. How you deal with it determines how the team reacts next time when they encounter a similar situation. Tim Gitao from the Kenya section, uh, um, uh, originally f in terms of uh, originally from Kenya, uh, residing in Boston now. Hope to be back in Kenya soon. But uh, I uh, so uh, first of as Gidinji mentioned, I, I am not uh, a finance guy, but uh, have learned finance from working on. Um, uh, personal finance, obviously personal budgeting and and, and uh, reading books and implementing things on on personal finances, and also realizing in projects that I have worked on uh, here in the U.S. and some in uh, uh, Canada and mostly in Sub-Saharan Africa uh, when I was based in Kenya. Uh, these projects are very much uh, from the beginning to the end. Uh, money and finance is, is a big thing uh, for the company and for the customer. So in this case, uh, this project, you would say, is, uh, is basically you are the guys who are implementing a project. But there is essentially an owner or somebody who is responsible for this money that you were given for this smart keep under project. So you have to think about it in terms of what are their needs? What are their expectations? Uh, 
uh, what do they want to see done with the money, uh, what kind of things uh, uh, are we looking at, and, and then also for the team, what are the expectations of this team in terms of how the money will be spent, what, what are they looking forward to in terms of how the project will be implemented, how well are they, is the budget written, uh, how well is the communication around finances. So, uh, uh, in addition to my personal and professional uh, uh, experience with money, I, I as Gidinji mentioned also, I uh, have been working with uh, currently uh, in charge of finances for the Africa Council for the last two years, which covers all, all the IEEE Sub Sahara Africa sections. Yeah, I can. Can everyone see the presentation? I can see it from my end too. Okay. So I will proceed. Uh, this is a training on finance management and accounting in engineering projects. Uh, the, the, the principles and the, the, the concepts discussed here can be used uh, in, in uh, applied in, in various projects. Obviously, uh, we, are, we are here because of the, the, the Smart Kibanda project, but the principles um, are transferable to some of the, any other projects. And at the end of this, and I will share this PowerPoint to Chris and Givinji and they can distribute it. So you will have this for your records. So three main points um, to discuss today. Uh, the first two, uh, well, I think the, the first point and the third point is more uh, general. Uh, budgeting, the second point will be general, but also we will uh, be looking at the specific Smart Kibanda budget and discussing uh, that budget. So once I finish my points, there will be uh, a discussion around point number two in regards to uh, the Smart uh, Kibanda budget. So, so in terms of project finances, uh, I think you always want to start as with anything uh, with the end in mind. And if you think about the end, then you have to think about overall project cost, meaning uh, what you have an initial amount of $5,000, but is that the overall project cost? Is the project, is the overall project cost going to be $4,000? Is it going to be five thousand or six thousand dollars? So you have to always start with that and start asking yourself those questions, that, that kind of a question. Uh, hi, my name is Steve Ngoje, senior solar design engineer from Illumina Africa Limited. It was a pleasure working on this project as a consultant and also as a trainer uh, with the team, the IEEE team, who are behind the Smart Kibanda project. Uh, and more importantly, I think now that the project uh, having been successfully completed, it's great to see how the team was able to use uh, the general design concepts that I was able to present with them to meet uh, uh, required standards, but also uh, able to work within their budget uh, without necessarily cutting on the key concepts of what solar design is really about. I think this project is going to be a benefit to most households who rely on uh, the Kibanda business. And uh, yeah, I think uh, great work to the team and may they continue with the same work. Thank you. Uh, my name is Samuel Mangi. I was a former university student. And I'm going to take you through the steps of uh, product development, uh, which is something we have been doing for over the years now. So I'll start sharing my screen and we start over uh, our meeting today. So I'm going to take you through a product development is a 
is uh, it refers to the complete process of taking a product to market. There are so many factors that uh, are involved with the product development. I usually a lot of decision making. Uh, for example, when I look at our product and how far we have come, it's a lot of iteration, removing this, adding this. Yeah. So there are steps when you are developing a, a product. And I'm going to take you through these steps briefly, where we start from ideation, research, planning, prototyping, sourcing, costing, and now finally you go to commercialization. Ideally, the, you don't have to follow these steps as I have put through, because at times you are usually at the sourcing stage and you need to go back to the drawing board and do research, again, do planning. Now from planning, you, you find yourself going back to ideation. So you're usually not limited to follow these uh, steps. You should really cast in stone. So what, whatever we do here, uh, uh, we, we like yes, our products to have as much features as possible. But I would really advise you, you can categorize uh, your features and say which features are much more important and you can maybe uh, make a project, whatever the first machine will be, the first uh, kiosk you'll be making will be your prototype. So apparently your prototype looks like your product, uh, but now you cannot, uh, uh, we cannot do this without going to the prototype stage. So I, may, I think your first product is your prototype. So whatever you'll be doing, uh, I think uh, if you can be able to, uh, uh, if you can have all features that you are saying, the better. But you, you maybe you can uh, put your features uh, as you can have the features put in an order. You say we need these features number one, number two, number three, number four. So feature number one is the most important. Number two is the second most important. So maybe feature number one will be you will need a structure. So that's uh, the first feature you need, and maybe the second feature you need. I think I have heard of. Would be actually a big problem here. So the second uh, feature that you need to work as quickly as possible is cooling. So you can make sure you have this feature, uh, putting much of your time in feature number two. And now after achieving feature number two working properly, you can go to feature number three, which is maybe I have heard you need to control the conditions where the uh, uh, the, uh, the shopkeeper, let me call uh, Call them a shopkeeper. You need to have the good conditions. Uh, so I think there that one can be the bad feature, of maybe the second. But I think because you really don't have a, a, a problem of uh, temperatures in Kenya, that can be a bad uh, feature that you do. The journey is usually very tough. I can't uh, say I can't. Uh, the journey is usually very tricky. You will think you know this these changes you have to unlearn so many things you learned in school uh, customers <coughs> customers uh, have a way of uh, doing your project of using your machine you do a lot of iteration some customers will not believe in what you are doing others will call you different names uh, in the process of uh, making a product that people will be angry at you so I can't say the journey is as uh, easy as uh, people see. Uh, people don't tell you the other side of entrepreneurship of making the product. But at the end of the day, I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it.
Hi everyone, my name is Samuel Kimani, the director of Tumaini Innovation Center. Tumaini basically supports young people at risk, especially those living and working on the streets. We reach out to them and uh, convince them to come to this place where we connect them back to their families. And then we use vocational training as a way of rehabilitation because when you give them a skills, they change their minds and they have the ability to get skills that they can be able to work and get a job out there. Then we have a department that works to get them jobs. It starts with attachment, then hopefully it can turn into a job. So the reason why we are here this morning is because we are working with IEEE, from, uh, especially more university chapter. Uh, they are supporting us to uh, to build and set up a smart Kibanda. Uh, Kibanda basically is a kiosk that you can use to sell uh, groceries. Um, and uh, it's a smart because uh, it's smart because uh, we are using solar to power it. Um, so that if it's at night or it's at dark, there's a bulb that is powered by solar and other things that you can charge a phone for community members. And we really, really appreciate uh, uh, IEEE for this wonderful gesture, very generous. Um, and the fact that we are collaborating with more university students and our students uh, to set up the project, we are very, very grateful. Um, this project quite in a big way relates to what we do here because as I mentioned earlier we do vocational training and in our vocational school we have different departments. So we have the electrical department which our students of course will work together with the Mo University students to set up the solar panel so that it can power the bulb and other things there, the charging system. We also have the welding department where we weld structures like this. So as, a, as the structure has been brought, it has a few fine-tuning things that need to be done. We'll do a bit of grinding. We'll add more shelves so that we can put more marketware, like, uh, you know, things to sell. And um, the fact that even the setting it up there, uh, we, we need someone to carry the, uh, the kibanda, set the ground, all that we'll do in collaboration with our students. Um, and lastly, uh, this project, is one of the income generating projects for Tumaini because Tumaini is donor dependent and needs a bit of community money to run the program. And uh, whatever we will sell here in this Kibanda, the profits will be plugged back to Tumaini to support more young people to be able to get skills, get jobs, and live a life off the streets. Um, I would say thank you very much to the Moi University students and especially Gidinji who uh, has been leading the IEEE chapter previously and continuously works with this project and the support from IEEE site uh, organization that has funded the program. Big thanks. We are very, very, very grateful. Hi everyone, my name is Collins. I'm in Manapunzi Yapa Tumaini, Innovation Vocation Training Center. Okay, Tunashukuru kwa Moy University na IEEE kwa kutusaidia kupleta kibanda kama hii. Uh, finally, atu kwa na kibanda enye tuneza sell vitu zetu. Ndiyo community wa at least wakipita, waone product zetu. But saitu na fra, tuneza sell vitu zetu na community wakipita at least watu wakipita watona products na kazi ambayo tunafanya hapa hivi. So tunashukuru sana Moi University kwa kutuletea kibanda na tunashukuru sana na tuna appreciate kwa hiyo. Kwa machina naitwa Monica Koet. Chini ya jina chulikana ni mama Karu. Kenya natumia kwa kibanda. Watu wamefurahia hii nyumba sana. Kwanza sana sana wewe wanapita kwa barabara. Pitu inaonekana msuri. Mtu ataweza ipisha mkokado ama nyanya nini. Tu inaonekana display iko sawa. Eh. Walikuja tu wakanuliza. 
tunataka kukusaidia na nyumba. Yeye nilikuwa naye, nilikuwa na jeshewe, nilikuwa na kibanda kama hiyo. Sasa wakaniambia tutakuletea nyumba. Tutakubali nikaambia ya ndio. Nikanisaidia ndakubali. Eh, ndio wananiambia. Niko na furaha sana. Nimesaidia sana si jeshewe na kitu sipepi tena kwenye nilikuwa na pepa nilikuwa na pepa mpaka kwa nyumba kisha asubuhi narudisha tena nilikuwa na kuka kasi mapema sasa wamenisaidia sana siku hizi nauza mpaka saa hii Nina ni Helen sana mtai nimeuza mboga miaka mingi almost 27 years moyo akiwa president <laughs> kidogo kidogo Hao walikuja wanafunzi ya Gambas. Ndio nisanga maswali tu. Maswali, maswali. Kaniambia umeuza hivi mboga nitaambia miaka mingi na ninafurahia ilikuwa kama chokes. Sasa igakuwa tu wananiuliza sanga maswali. Wananiomba ngado sasa tukuje mali huko. Nikaambia kuje ni niko. Wakaenda tena. Siku yenye walikuja wakaniandika kibanda yako iko tia. Nikaambia ah na sintaka kama mtoto ambaye Hakaenda. Kingine wakaniambia inapikwa rangi. Nikamwambia sana nitashukuru. Kingine wakakuja wakaniambia inakuja. Nikamwambia wanalipia. Nikamwambia hapana. Sijui. Sikondenga ilipopiga na ikawa the following Saturday. Walinipigia tumekuja mapi nikaanza sawa. Wakaniambia twigo wapi? Nikamwambia saa hizi za imekuwa usubiri kulala kitanda. Na mungu kuniambia mapema. Kaambia muweze tu hapo. Takuja kesho. Kaambia naenda charge morning takuja afternoon. Nililala nikawasa labda wanakaseka. Nikawaza charge nikaambia pasta sikuti kanisani naenda kuona ile kuwa pasta yangu anaitanga supermarket. Tang tang 2016 alikuwa anasema anga supermarket. Muendange mnunulie ile nsukumi apatanga hata sadaka. Akulea tanga kanisani. Ukifika sokoni mnunulie apate sadaka. Sasa alikuwa anaitanga supermarket. Nikaambia yes, kwa supermarket ile ulikuwa unaniambianga supermarket imefika leo. Nilikuja kweli na material sana ilikuwa na. Na walikuwa maniambia utakuwa na nini? Kaambia maybe kokoto. Niko naye na mchanga ile mchanga mchanga rangi ilikuwa naye. Wenye waliendelea na kazi. Waliendelea. Walifanya kazi. Tafika chini. Tafika chini my name is Arubadia Karudu. I am a born again Christian. I love Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I'm one of the persons living with HIV and AIDS, and I'm the coordinator and I'm the director of Kim Plus. Kim Plus is a group of people living with HIV and AIDS in Kimumu, which is Kimumu people living with HIV and AIDS. Now, we are, um, we are very much privileged to have uh, the university being a part of us in this team. We've been uh, friends for long, and uh, they have decided to support us with the first few plus in Nani, because uh, this one will help us to generate uh, income and uh, revolve our funds because we want, as, we, as much as we want, we, we need support. But uh, there's a time that we lack support. But if we have a revolving fund within ourselves, we can uh, engage ourselves in businesses that can uh, make income for our project to continue, even without funding. Because funding comes once. We don't have a, a donor. We have well who come and support us once and all. But at the moment they go, we sometimes have nothing to support our children with. But with this, we can uh, move a step at a time. Yes, uh, so just you wonder why I'm still dressed like this. Uh, it's um, around uh, 8 p.m. here, but uh, I think I'll wear my mask on. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, so this is uh, um, Kim Plus uh, Groceries which we are, we are doing the transformation here. And uh, among the things that you'll realize that uh, is, uh, is what we, we are having here. Hello, 
My name is Vanessa Cabrera Ereri. I'm the site chair within the female section at Kuli. And I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the Smart Uganda project team on the successful completion of their project well, within the IEEE More Student Branch. And as site, we take on projects and partner with underserved communities to help them find solutions to some of their problems. And it is a privilege to be uh, working with sites and uh, we hope that we'll be able to implement more projects within the Kenya section and to touch more lives within Kenya, uh, within especially in the rural communities. And I urge on all our volunteers within the Kenya section to enroll and become part of the site membership and to also come on board and um, plug into the various projects that we have, some of them which are upcoming. And we are also taking on the initiative to ensure that we train our volunteers on how to go about the project implementation, how can they uh, submit their proposals. So I would like to um, thank you all who are active uh, volunteers within the IEEE um, Kenya section and um, kudos to the Smart Kibanda team. A great job and uh, we look forward to more successful projects and uh, we hope to do much much more uh, within the next um, year to come. Thank you. Greetings everyone. My name is Esther Moshiri, the current chair of IEEE Kenya section. Very excited to be speaking about the great innovation and change that IEEE student branch have created in Kenya by setting up the smart key banders. I want to congratulate the entire team that was involved from the trainers, the idea creators who came up with an idea of setting up smart key banders, the students particularly who really worked hard on the ground, including the community that contributed a lot of their own resources, their time, their spaces. Watching the video that was recorded, listening to the trainings that were done, I feel very proud to be the chair of IEEE at this particular moment, when we are truly living what IEEE stands for, delivering technology that changes humanity. I am looking at some of the feedback that are given by the community on the ground, working with uh, street children, working with people living with uh, HIV and AIDS, and really giving them uh, a platform or a business that I can actually give them uh, money to live on. Because some of these, especially those living with HIV and AIDS, require money for their own treatment. So I really want to just congratulate the team that was involved from, without mentioning anybody in particular, but also appreciating IEEE for the resources, the financial resources provided for the technologies, the knowledge that these uh, students were able to gain even by researching on the resources that IEEE provides. For us, this is really the kind of impact that we want to see happening in our own communities. And so, Big congratulations for the successful completion of setting up the IEEE Smart Key Banders. And I do hope that this actually is but the beginning of us setting up more of these V Banders, especially in our rural communities, to truly make a difference, to make an impact, to transform lives, and to bring technology that will bring lasting change to humanity. Thank you very much. Once again, I am Esther Moshiri. IEEE Kenya Section Chair. Thank you and congratulations to the team. Hello, my name is John Peter Chege. Um, I'm an IEEE member and uh, Moyo University alumni. Um, I left Moyo University, I think, in 2018, right? Um, so first of all, let me just say I'm very proud of the Smart Kibanda team. Um, congratulations, Kibinji, um, Chris Murimi, Samia, 
and the whole team basically um you guys have done a great job i've seen the results and the outcome and i'm jealous that um as mrm we won uh, we didn't get to be part of this uh, uh, great project um so the team came uh, approached me i think uh, mid last year uh, that is 2021 um uh, they wanted us to partner some sort of industrial partnership uh, because mrm has a couple of solutions that would have worked with uh, the smart kibanda team and then um also to consult uh, uh, industrial uh, professionalism and whatever during the project so um it was an exciting opportunity for me and uh, i immediately took it up and uh, forwarded the proposal to our lead uh, market uh, marketing uh, officer um nicolas nganga and uh, we organized for a meeting um early this year um that is 2022 around january february there um we had a meeting negotiated here and there and uh, unfortunately to cut the long story short we were not able to onboard mrm to the project because um mrm is looking into going to solar we are already doing pre-engineered buildings um we are already producing crp panels that is cold room panels and the whole concept of the smart kibanda really would have utilized most of our products if not all of our products so it would have been a great opportunity for us to partner but um um i think now that the team went ahead and uh, has uh, have actually shown the proof of concept maybe um the team can try and uh, commercialize the project because that was the main issue that um our marketing lead had uh with the project um he felt like the team um or rather the whole project was based around um giving back to society which is actually what i think poli is about uh site uh, the site uh, group uh, it's a humanitarian effort so uh, really the project was based on um giving back to society but um as an industry industry partner we felt that we we wanted to commercialize the project because it looked like a viable project so we wanted uh, um projections of maybe how many kibandas are you looking into doing how much will it cost and um, um do we have the market for these kibandas uh, so i hope um, that going forward that uh, the project can be commercialized and if the team in future has a project uh, around um anything that can be um uh, where industrial partners can come in and uh, commercialize uh, the the whole thing um i think the team needs to look into how it can benefit the partners in terms of uh, commercializing uh, of course it would have benefited the mrm in terms of um uh, the team would have used our material but again we were coming in as an industrial partner to maybe offer the solutions maybe at a reduced subsidized cost or maybe free um but, but that, that that was the whole idea um the whole problem that the marketing lead had with um with the project because um uh, when it comes to sustainability and scaling up the project for the future it now looks like it won't work um so maybe um now that the proof of concept is there um we can try and see whether we can take it we can go to market and um, scale up the whole idea the whole concept and uh, it's it's a great project um kenya is suffering food insecurity so the smart kibanda can be scaled up to anything it can it has started as a smart kibanda it can be um modified to anything um for farmers anything um in terms of inventory management solar panel being used for cooling um digitalizing records and inventory management and so on so um it's an exciting project and i'm so happy to see the guys have already implemented the team uh, the the whole project and um congratulations to the team all the best thank you I am Alex Mangale from Uplands Technologies. I'm a technical manager in this business.
I was contracted by IT Moy University. Mimi na timu yangu wenda sawa kwanza kuweza kufanya kazi kawa sawa. Na pia kuna timu kama Moy University ambayo ni students ni kina Chris Alan na wengine ambao tushika piano hadi tukafanikisha hii project. Na kila ambayo kimesukua kidogo tu ni haja kama ambayo inaweza kubadilika wakati Thank <laughs> you. E, kazi haikuwa mbaya kwa mpangilio wote wa kutia Chris Alan na Yuno mgeni Newton tuliweza kufanikisha kazi kwa uzuri zaidi. Nikawa sawa. Hello, my name is Newton. First I'd like to thank Hack and Site for sponsoring the Smart Guest project. Uh, it is out of the generosity that the project started and that it has come to a successful completion. Then my next photo thanks goes to the great team that I've worked with. Uh, great uh, because uh, whenever we encountered any sort of challenge, major or minor, everyone was able to bring in their effort to make sure that the uh, challenge has been resolved in the most effective and efficient way possible. Uh, then my major role in the project was to lead the mechanical and structural works team. Uh, it was a pressure serving the uh, the team and uh, they were much coordin coordinative. Uh, then what I did most in the project was uh, doing the designs and also making sure that the uh, design product transition was as smooth and as effective as possible. Uh, we all know that if there is any sort of delay within a project, then that comes with a cost, that is the holding cost. So uh, holding costs were uh, also um, uh, other sorts of challenge. Uh, then uh, another challenge was uh, a lack of appropriate or enough equipment and tools for the fabrications of the units. Uh, then uh, number number four challenge uh, was uh, was delayed delay in the project due to multiple drawbacks. Uh, yes, there were multiple drawbacks which made the project maybe lag behind. Uh, some of them is that we are students and most of the within the six months period which was later on ex ex uh, extended due to some uh, various reasons. Uh, within that period, uh, not everyone was available, yeah, because uh, we are students and uh, we have, uh, learning is our major thing that we have to do. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who came in uh, during the uh, product development period uh, to make sure that uh, the, pro the project was a success. That is, maybe let me say the band party. I'm much grateful uh, because of that. Yeah, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Jimmy Okumu. I have been a member of the mechanical and structural team. Uh, development of the Smart Kibanda has been a very enriching process for me. I have learned a lot in terms of project management, communication, and financial management. Um, I always wanted to do something that would make an impact in the community, and I believe that this project has been one that has helped me to achieve that because seeing the Mambogas happy because they have modern technologies to work with, and make their work even more efficient has been quite an enriching experience. I want to thank the IEEE, Mo University chapter, 
for allowing us to carry out this project and also to thank the Kenyan section for supporting us all through. Special thanks to our project lead, Benji Muriongi and Chris Muremi, and everyone who we've done this together. I thank you all guys and I wish you well in all other your endeavors. Thanks. My name is Samia Yahya Muhammad. I am the current IEEE Moi University Chair. As IEEE Moi University, what we do is trying to apply the technology that we have learned so as to solve the problems that are facing our community. The main goal of IEEE is to advance technology for humanity. My role in this project, I was a finance manager and uh, I oversee the project in terms of uh, cash flow, financial reports, and expenses, so as to ensure that the project runs smoothly, implemented effectively at a minimum cost, but of the best quality. Through my participation in this project, I got to learn and understand financial management project management and product development through the trainings that IEEE has exposed us to and through this uh, project I got to learn that communication is a key for a successful project when working with a team. I would actually like to thank IEEE, Sight and Hack for funding this project and like to thank each and one of us who participated in this project to make it a success so as to make the life of Mamambogas easy and protect them from the losses that they have been undergoing. Yeah, my name is Bernard God. I'm an entry member of Moi University Student Branch, and uh, I'm one person who is passionate about technology, uh, about electronics, software, and also Internet of Things to be able to solve the ever changing life problems. Uh, as part of the, this great project, IEEE Smart Kiosk, I was serving as the resource manager. Uh, my role basically entails being able to manage the team, being able to assign roles to different team members. And this was based on the different skill sets that the team had. So if you basically uh, are good at electronics, I would press you in the electronics team. If you are good at uh, 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 managing people, I would put you in the project management team. And if you're good at um, uh, mobilizing out the people in the community, then I would put you in the respective docket. Uh, as a member in here, uh, mine was uh, so simple, to be able to see how people perform, to be able to see how people uh, learn of the challenges and be able to come up with the solutions on them. Uh, throughout this, uh, I have been able to, to see people grow throughout their different skill sets. Personally, I've also grown. I have been able to interact with the different people in the team with diverse fields and I've been able to learn a few uh, i didn't know personally how to do solar installation because my course doesn't entail that but i literally learned how to do solar configuration electrical installation and also being able to reach out to the community uh, one thing that i noticed is that uh, reaching out to the community and trying to understand their problems is not an easy thing so the, the first thing that we did as a team was to be able to uh, do out and reach out for research go to the ground uh, with questionnaires and be able to collect a lot of information from the people around to be able to know what challenges the Mamamboga used to face and to be able to understand uh, what probable solutions to be able to help them. I realized that uh, for you to be able to come up with a project which is going to center the demographics uh, fitting Kenya and any other country, you first of all have to understand the people who are going to use your product. And for our case, we went out, reached out to Mwambogas, find, find out uh, that uh, so many of them really face the challenge of storage. 
uh, storing their, their groceries, their fruits. It was a very big challenge for them because they would buy from uh, uh, large producers and then the fruits would stay for a very short time and then they will be rotted. This was a very big loss for people who depend on uh, uh, selling items for a full-time job. So ours was to find what's the best solution that we could be able to at the same time secure their products at the same time ensure that their profit margins are still uh, up there. So what we did was to identify the smartest solution to be able to help them not only store their products but also ensure they have uh, a consistent lighting throughout their kibanda to have uh, consistent storage units and to have a, a conducive environment for them to be able to sell an attractive platform where customers will have a trust in their products and be able to buy it. Uh, being part of the team, uh, we have been able to deliver this not because we had any um, uh, guiding personalities that were pushing here and there for forces and uh, uh, forcing people to deliver. We did this throughout uh, effective communication, throughout uh, checking out what other people are doing, what has been done before and improving on what has been done. So we are really happy to deliver this and we know that throughout the community we're going to create an impact, not only in Moi University, in Tumaini Innovation Center and any other places that are within Kenya. We are confident that this is going to be a milestone towards enhancing the uh, fruit and grocery industry in the local and informal sectors without, within Kenya. Thank you so much. My name is Monica Oswa. I, I was a member of the Smart Kibanda project. I was in the electrical team as the team lead. I enjoyed being a member of the Smart Kibanda right from the beginning. I got amazing teammates from whom I learned a lot. I also got to attend the webinars and from the webinars I learned so many other skills other than the technical skills, finance management, project management, all these things were new to me. I had never learned them before. But uh, what I enjoyed most was working with the rest of the team in order to achieve the, the final objective of the project, the main objective, and also um, knowing that our focus that our agenda our main focus is to make a better better uh, to provide a solution to a problem that is greatly affecting the retail the retail sector in our society that is coming up with the smart kibanda the smart kibanda idea was fun to to conceptualize and it also challenged me in so many ways i learned some some tough life lessons for example, uh, I would say I've not always been a very good uh, time manager. I've not always played well as a team member, but being in the Smart Kibanda and working with people who have the skills already challenged me to improve on my own as an individual. And in the end, uh, I, I, I realized the importance of playing right, playing my role right in the team. Also came to understood the importance of other social skills, other interpersonal skills, such as communication, because for us to uh, to achieve the goal of the, the project, we had to be constantly communicating and ensuring that we are all talking from the same, we are all on the same page, understanding each other. I loved how we, we worked tirelessly for that entire period and how uh, we kept we kept coming up with interesting ideas of how to actualize our goals. I loved seeing how people reason differently. It 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 gave me a zeal to always uh, look forward to our team meetings. And uh, towards the end of the kibanda, my highlight for the entire project was when we delivered the kibanda at Mabatini. And after we'd done the electrical installation. I, the Mama Boga requested us to leave the lights on. It might have seemed like a simple, simple request, but to me it meant a lot because I realized she no longer has that challenge where when darkness falls, she has to close. Now she can 
she can continue selling her commodities even past uh, past the when the sun goes down she can continue selling and then uh, now when it comes to other other aspects of the kibanda the fact that her products will last longer they will not perish faster the fact that it's it's very beautiful it therefore attracts more customers and then uh, we we realize that the problems we were we were trying to solve are not just um problems on paper they actually real problems that she she uh, the mamboga faces every day and being being a, a member of the team that provided that solution for me it's something that i'll always be proud of and um i'm grateful because at the end of it all not only have i grown as an individual i have also i've also learned a lot i have i have enjoyed the process i have I have grown in so many aspects of my life. I'm grateful to the team. I'm grateful to to the to the organize to the IEEE uh, for giving us this chance because uh, through this chance I have also found a new passion. I I have uh, initially I never knew how that at any point I'd be interested in clean energy because remember for uh, an electrical power supply we used solar but i realize it's something interesting it's something that we can do and it is it is fun so i have grown and i'll forever be grateful to actually for giving me this opportunity and um i'm also thankful to the mo university student chapter because uh this it's through this team that i got an opportunity to be part of the project and most of them most of my uh, all my teammates are members of IEEE and they have they have given me a reason to be proud of the branch knowing that i have worked with the great minds and i know that in future i will always have great people to look look up to and to seek advice i'm also grateful to Gilinji for sacrificing most of the things that i learned the skills that i've already mentioned i learned through him and by him guiding us we also got a chance to to see things from a very different perspective not the way we would have seen it as students i'm therefore therefore grateful and though i am happy that you finally delivered the project i kind of feel i feel some some nostalgia i would have, i would have loved to keep continue working with this team on the keep on the project yeah but i'm grateful thank you so much for this opportunity and i look forward to having many other opportunities to volunteer and to improve this uh, my name is moses kikeme i've been part of the electrical team that did the smart kibanda um it has been a really good experience to see the designs come to life um uh, to do the to do the wiring and to do the to do the final wiring it has been a really great experience thank you Yes, my name is Alan Kimeli. I've been the research lead in the Smart Kibanda project and uh, it's been a very great experience of doing this product design from the beginning to the end. Uh, I've really enjoyed doing this project because it has a direct impact on society, to the community and uh, the joy of seeing uh, how the users have received this product has really motivated me or inspired me to do more things and to touch the world in a much greater way. My name is Leila Sinore. I'm a third year student in Mo University. Uh, I am super grateful for the opportunity to be part of the Smart Kibanda project. I was in the electrical team. Uh, I worked on the smartness aspects of the Kibanda as well as the design and sizing of the solar. Uh, I'm super grateful for the chance to learn great skills that I gained during this project, such as you know being a great communicator, uh, being a great listener, being analytical, and coming up with a product that is centered towards the needs of the user. Um super grateful for my teammates and everyone that we worked this project with because I got to interact with so many people and learn so many skills that I might not have learned if maybe I didn't take part in this project. Yeah. 
um, as this project comes to a close, it's been six months of intense work and I got to learn a lot of product development skills that will come in handy uh, later in my career. Hi, my name is Clifford Oma and I'm a second year student at Amor University Main Campus. I do a bachelor's degree in electrical electronics engineering and I'm part of the IEEE Moi University student branch. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be part of the Smart Kibanda project. And as part of the Smart Kibanda project, I was in the research team. So as part of as the research team, we were the user's voice in the project. So we, we advocated for the user and ensured that the user was considered in every design that was made and every decision, every key decision in the project uh, was also uh, for the best, had had the best for the user. So uh, the, the key roles that we did was uh, we started by uh, designing questionnaires, we conducted user interviews, and from the data that we collected, we actually analyzed it and uh, drew useful insights from that, which actually was able to direct the technical teams, which are both the electrical and mechanical teams, on how to make their decisions. So uh, it's, it's, it's been a wonderful experience. Uh, working uh, under the research team and actually understanding the users and trying to see how best we can support them, trying to empathize with them and seeing uh, the, the best ideas that we can come up with to best support them. Towards the end of the project, our, our role switched because uh, we were more focused on now the owners because we were delivering now the project. So we had to identify the best individual owners that we could give uh, the project and also the best organizational owners that we could give the project. Uh, apart from that, we also had to keep in contact with them uh, just to ensure a smooth transition uh, of the product from us to them. Uh, overall, the whole project has been a bliss. It's been amazing. At the start, we were all excited when we were doing this project and everyone just was, was just happy and we all had our thoughts on how the project would go and we thought it would just be a smooth ride. Uh, however, it was not that smooth because we, we actually started to encounter roadblocks, we started to encounter challenges, we started to encounter things like hiking prices for some products, we started to uh, I remember at some point we had to work with tight deadlines and really, really, really tight budget. And at that point was when we like started to feel the weight of the project. And this is when like a lot of people were now feeling the weight of the project. And but we still pulled through. We pulled through despite like all the challenges that we faced, all the different uncertainties that has happened. We had to come up with new plans on the go, uh, had to think of new ideas on the fly. And from that, like we, we moved on. And I think through that experience, it's changed how we see, how I view engineering projects. Now I view it much differently. And I believe like right now I have more experience on how to handle them and always to have contingencies in case things, things go wrong, which it seems like they always do. Uh, but overall, it's just been a really, really, really wonderful experience. And the best part of it is like seeing the smiles on the individual and organizational owners that we give the project and just hearing them say how it will impact them. We're just waiting to see how that impact, uh, waiting to see and measure that impact. But this, 
the happiness in their faces is just worth it. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. My name is Kevin Kipunyana, and I'm an electrical and telecommunication student at Moi University. I've been part of the Smart Kibana project, and through the project, I've been able to learn a lot, most especially in electrical installation, since I was part of the electrical team. And also, I've been able to network with great people. The members of the project have been awesome, and they have helped me to learn a lot from networking and electrical installation, product development, and project management. Also, I'm proud to be part of this project since I've been able to touch the hearts of many people, most especially the vulnerable people in the society, like the people of Tumaini, and also from the other people in Eloret, mostly the homes for those living with AIDS. And also, I would like to thank the whole team for their support, and most especially Article V, Hack, Hack, which provided the finance to ensure that this project was a success. And thank you, and I look forward to working with you people. Thank you. My name is Christopher Jesse. Actually, I'm doing electrical and telecommunication engineering at Moi University. And Smart Kibanda is a project that we started way back in November. Uh, we've been trying to create Kibandas that are that are somehow smart so that they may be able to fit the needs of the, the Mamabogas. Like whereby you find that the, their communities go bad and they incur losses. So particularly, I've been a member of the electrical team and we've been working hand in hand with a, with a, with a group of us, four of us and two of us joined us later. Uh, in this project, we've, we've experienced highs and lows, uh, whereby at times we, we faced adversities and at, and at times we were at our peak. So the adversities, all, they all depended on how we could solve them, and I thank God that we made it through. So there are there, there's a, there are a number of skills that I've actually gotten from this from this project that we have done. Uh, first of all, I wasn't familiar with a lot of electronics like maybe using the relays alarms and timers but with the help of my colleagues and the the, the the team at large actually i've gotten some experience on how to to operate them and how to use them um, many thanks to those who supported us everyone the school uh ieee humanitarian section and everyone that contributed to this project being a success we thank you and may god bless you so much Okay. Yeah, I spent most of the day trying to help you do Skibanda and bring it to completion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a long project, but um, we are finally almost seeing it complete. Yeah, good. And we are very happy about it. Uh, so, Smart Kibanda is basically a Kibanda mm -hmm. that is able to improve the life of the common Mamamboga. Mm -hmm. That is uh, improving the shelf life of commodities that the Mamamboga has. Another thing, it has a solar mm -hmm. to actually provide power during the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing, it has a security feature where someone cannot steal the, the solar without them knowing. So it alerts the owner of the kibanda in case someone wants to steal the solar panel. Yeah. Nice. And we've been a team of 14 people, mm -hmm. and we are very happy to see this uh, thing working out. Yes. IEEE is the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Mm -hmm. It is basically a, a, an international organization mm -hmm. um, used uh, in, for advancing technology for the benefit of humanity. Mm -hmm. So what it does, it uses technology mm -hmm. to improve the lives of common people. Yeah. So, uh, with uh, IEEE ARC, uh -huh. is humanitarian activity. Uh -huh. and this is a project that we are doing uh -huh. uh, to build uh, smart Kibanda units uh -huh. uh, to help the local youth, uh, the local mama and brothers, those who sent to groceries and daily uh, proceedings. This was designed to uh, reduce the handedness that they face during their normal activity in their jobs. 
Uh, for example, if you notice the other units, the uh -huh. traditional ones, uh, they are squarish structures like that. So uh, they are uh, often affected by the weather. Uh, also, we have integrated some sensors and solar panels to provide light to the uh, other electrical uh, support for the units. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. We have done uh, quite a number of projects. So this, this one is uh, the one we did this season. Uh, this was from uh, September to now. Uh, we were to finish on it, but we had another extension of one month. Uh, uh, so after this, there is also another humanitarian uh, project sponsored by Art to the IGP Kenya section. Yeah, but this was done by IGP more University student that. So we also did another one on uh, hydroponics. Uh, that was to, for cultivation to improve the food security, uh, security in the region. Yeah. Hello dear listeners, it is a pleasure for me to have this opportunity to talk to you about uh, School of Engineering of Moi University and the IEEE Smart Kibanda project uh, and a bit about us at Moi University. My name is Severino Skifalu and I am the current IEEE patron at Moi University and also I'm the chairman of the Department of Electrical and Communications Engineering of Moi University. First and uh, foremost, I want to immensely thank IEEE for funding the university student project Smart Kibanda that has enabled our Moi University students to hone their skills at solving real life challenges like the one just uh, tackled. This one which I'm talking about, Smart Kibanda. The support and the guidance that my office has provided and largely the support that we've got from IEEE has enabled the students to engage with more university administration as solution providers the community of people who are in need of technical assistance in solving their challenges. And also it has networked our students with other IEEE peers in other universities. And this is great. Uh, we really are uh, very grateful on that initiative. Four smart kibandas were developed. Two units were donated to individuals around Moi University, and uh, two other units were donated to organizations in Eldoret, namely the Tumaini Innovation Center, and another organization called the Kimumu People Living With AIDS. This humanitarian assistance through the Smart Kibanda is aimed at increasing their daily earnings and raise their living standards and it is impacting on them very positively already. The units that the students built employed solar systems to provide power, enhanced security, aesthetics and special display and storage racks. The community living around has already uh, felt the positive impact of these smart kibandas and this is all thanks to the contributions that were made by IEEE. And so we look forward to more such great engagements with the IEEE and more developments in the future. Thank you very much. Now, I want to talk a bit about uh, the School of Engineering of Moi University. The School of Engineering of Moi University is one of the oldest schools having been started in 1986. The departments within the school are Mechanical and Production Engineering, 
electrical and uh, communications engineering, manufacturing and industrial textiles, chemical engineering, civil and structural engineering. Four of these uh, departments already have uh, postgraduate programs and uh, the last to join them is electrical department which has, is just about to launch its uh, postgraduate programs namely masters in uh, biomedical engineering masters in electrical engineering and phd in electrical engineering this is going to be an addition to the already very successful engineering programs that is electrical and electronics engineering and electrical and telecommunications engineering both these programs have delivered graduates far and wide in the world and the stu our students have found admissions in places such as Oxford, uh, Cambridge and uh, the other prestigious universities on other continents as well. Now, owing to the five engineering departments and their students, there is a diversity of uh, engineering knowledge and skills. And uh, Moi University is an exciting place for the students because from all these diverse backgrounds, they're almost able to tackle any challenge that is coming across to them. So finally, I would like to uh, once again thank the IEEE for sponsoring this project on Smart Kibana. Thank you once again. The IEEE, I am um, locally here and the YP chair, but more importantly, I also serve in the, uh, in the region as the, um, in the, a couple of committee, entrepreneurship and also DFI. Uh, in the region-wise, Africa Council also, I represent the industrial liaison, and uh, globally I serve as the uh, Associate Vice President in the IEEE Photonics uh, Society. So, this work has really brought in a lot of um, uh, lessons to specifically to the team and also to myself as the lead or uh, as the team lead of this project. Uh, very interesting, something that I like to mention is that uh, as you can see back here, uh, this is uh, the last unit, the fourth unit that we employed uh, groceries. So basically, uh, why did we choose this? So Kim Plus uh, Groceries, uh, come along with me. Uh, Kim Plus Groceries, they have this grocery here, uh, which they, they, are, they are doing their own groceries. But if you can uh, pick a look from the inside, and, uh, you will notice that uh, they are using uh, wood and also all their groceries are being put in one place. So in our design, uh, in our design here, we factored in all that design into, into perspective and that's why you can see these kind of meshes. So those kind of meshes have, have been put there specifically for, for a design perspective that uh, we, through the research that we've done, we've noticed that uh, this is uh, really of great importance. Another thing is that uh, maybe you can come along with me. So as maybe you can see this street, this is, a, this is just a wide street uh, and uh, this place here, uh, Apart from all the reasons that we chose, yes, they have a green grocery, but the most important reason as to why we chose this is because of this, this map here. I think all of us understand what this means. So this place here hosts HIV and AIDS uh, positive kids, as well as also creating awareness to the community. I think if you can look around, you've seen this side, you can see the other side, maybe you can, can just show the street, how the street is. So basically this is a, a community, this is a whole community here. And uh, there's quite a lot has to do with uh, accepting people with uh, HIV and AIDS. We can just go inside. Uh, come along with me. So, uh, so this is uh, a project of people living with HIV and AIDS. Uh, we call it Kim Plus. Uh, it was started in 2013. Uh, this is a project of 2013. So there's quite a lot of things that we can run here. There's quite a lot of stuff we can see here. Uh, this is unused land on this side. Uh, this is just a uh, living uh, dormitory around. So basically what we saw in this is that uh, we saw an impact story that can be created inside here. So they have a green grocery, 
So meaning that they will support our agenda of the Smart Kibanda. That is the most important thing. Uh, point number two is that this is a, a community that is kind of stigmatized and uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, bias when we start to talk about people with HIV and AIDS. And again, that is, uh, that is really to our core. And also, more importantly, the kind of uh, all the other uh, units, we've distributed them uh, totally different places. But for this one, we decided at least to choose a location which, which is a, a bit closer to the people, where people are used to, to buying such kind of stuff and they can resonate with it. Yes, so, uh, so I think uh, you've seen uh, the, the, the other part of the front end and then this is uh, more or less like the area in between. And then this is where the kids uh, normally live. So it's a, it's a whole setup of uh, building where we have a lot of uh, things happening. So this is their kitchen, uh, a lot of kids here, very awesome, uh, uh, beautiful salts. Yeah, so you can see there's someone uh, preparing meal for them, so we will not want to just sh uh, keep shooting. But probably the, the whole idea here is, uh, you can see this is a whole homestead. And uh, for us, uh, we saw that uh, the, our main focus here is the impact. And I think if we could not bring that smart kibanda here, uh, yes, we could have taken it elsewhere, but if we, the, the way we've brought it here, it has brought out that kind of impact from the engineering perspective to the kids we are touching the kids we are touching people who are vulnerable in the society and so much more and so much more so to many also serves uh, street children so they take street children and then they bring them in they train them now to many innovation center is fully focused on engineering they do engineering and technology stuff from welding electricals as a matter of fact they 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 they, they were doing green groceries uh, later uh, earlier uh, earlier along where they were planting things in um, uh, in these uh, uh, green uh, green uh, green uh, green environment so uh, uh, when when we realize that they they normally used to 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 plant and then when they harvest they, they just use for consumption purposes. But now we came and thought that if at some point maybe they would like to scale and they are selling that of which they, they are doing, so probably now that will be the best place for them. And then as they expand their farm, uh, because when they get these street kids uh, out of the street, they bring them in and then they train them through engineering and technical skills, but also more importantly, try to bring them and uh, bring them in a manner that it's able to incorporate them in the in the community. Uh, we can bring something to them and then probably they can learn from that and they can, if they want to replicate the same project and start selling, they are, they, we can give them the design and also we can empower them so that they can start doing fabrications, electrical works and also be a channel into selling these units into other people who are interested in uh, around uh, Eldoret uh, overall. Uh, looking into the kids, looking into the, the, the why they are doing whatever they are doing, looking at the engineering side of things, looking at the, the community side of things, looking at what the project itself is supposed to do, the agriculture and all that. So these two uh, specific organizations really came out clearly uh, in showing that um, if we give them that project, that project will scale. That is one. And number two, that project will serve the community the way it's supposed to be. Because all the profits that are supposed to be uh, from that project is supposed to be pumped back into the, 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 the community and support those ones who are vulnerable. The last two projects that you will also see later is uh, one from Mama Ellen and the other one, I guess, from Mama, Car Mama Carol. Those two projects are not situated here in Eldoret Town, but uh, they are situated back in Moy University. So why did we choose again to put two projects in, uh, in an organization setting in, in Eldoret town, which is around, let's say, 40, 30 to 40 kilometers from Moy University, and then two other projects in Moy University. So the whole idea here is to make sure we maximize on the impact and also we maximize on, uh, on also the kind of letting people know what IEEE does. So basically, IEEE advances technology for humanity. But now, if we were to concentrate and put them all here in Eldoret Town, probably the home where Moi is, people will not, and even students themselves will not have understood that students can build projects uh, to that scale. So these individuals are the ordinary mamambogas. We call them mamambogas here in Kenya. For those ones uh, who are out there, they are called green groceries, uh, people who normally serve. And because most of the people who serve, uh, the, who normally do retail green groceries here are women. So you will hear so many people call them mamambogas. Mama is, is, is mother. So it's, it's more or less like mother grocery. 
So, mm. so again, we, 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 we focus, again, even if we are going back to Moi, we are still focusing on the impact part, which is we are no longer going and giving it out to anybody else, but we are giving the vulnerables to the community. So again, we saw the need at least to focus on now those specific users who are women, so that again, we can resonate with them, these are our mothers, these are our sisters, these are our, our wives, and these are also our colleagues, and uh, these are the people who feed the community. As a matter of fact, more than 60 to 80 percent of the, the, the retail uh, green groceries are being supplied by these women. So the focus that we had in uh, more university cases and also more university maps is to make sure we maximize on these another category of uh, users who are the main users in the green grocery retail uh, market so that we can optimize and we can scale what they do. When you are going to Moi, you will pass through KSS. So when you pass through KSS, that's where you will see one of the smart kibanda being located. So again, the idea here is to, to remind students that when you are coming, when you are, when you are entering Moi and when you are leaving Moi, Remember, there is this group of students, 15 students who existed, uh, I myself included as the, the lead and the founder and the pioneer of Moi University IEEE uh, student branch, who had a vision of transforming society and transforming the community with the use of technology. And whatever we learn in class, we have to come and bring it outside in the community. And when you are going in class, you have to understand that you are going to learn so that when you come out, you can come out and build something of great importance. So that's why we significantly put that unit at the intersection of where you are. You are not yet even to enter to Moi. From there up to Moi, it's around two kilometers. So that again tells you how strategically we are thinking in terms of the impact and showing the community importance of engineering and why we need to put community at our heart in whatever we do. Lastly, the last unit, uh, we've put it at a place called MAPS. You will be seeing that later tomorrow. So what we've done in this MAPS area, this is where all the students in their weekend, they normally go there to buy their green groceries. Again, how, where, where best will we put uh, if not in MAPS? Because again, MAPS serves each and every student in Moi University, whether you are cooking, whether you, you, you are buying your fruits, whether you are going to, to buy your, 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 your clothes over the weekend, or you will find each and every student at one point in MAPS. And that's why selecting MAPS to be, again, one of our site was the best place for us. So those are the four units that we've managed to build. Uh, initially, we were supposed to build five units, but due to budget constraints, among other things, we couldn't manage. But I thank God uh, because uh, the team that we've had and the way we've done our budgeting and the whole entire project, it's just awesome. Um, I couldn't have asked more as a team lead, uh, uh, in especially having that kind of a team. Special thanks to, uh, to the, the, the supporting staff, uh, like Mr. Kifalu, who came in Andy, especially where students needed uh, sites to stay and also do their, their works, especially sometimes we had to do like three days straight uh, product development workshop where I was the facilitator. I, I used to travel from Nairobi, come to Moi, stay there for three, uh, three days and nights, and then by the time I'm leaving, things are working. So special thanks to Mr. Severina Skifalu, who really helps students feel comfortable. We can't really take that uh, for granted. Again, I'd like to mention Chris Muremi, who, who really came in Andy uh, as a project manager for this, uh, uh, for this uh, project. So for my side, coming in as a professional, it, 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 okay, it was tough because I, I needed to, to do a lot of things, my, my daily work. I'm a systems engineer again, uh, I have other responsibilities, I'm a family man. So balancing all that with working with students, if you're working with hectic students, again it becomes very hard. And uh, I, will, I will really like to thank Chris Muremi uh, for coming in and taking in this initiative. Not only initiating the project from the proposal level, but also being there, taking leadership and taking initiative into, into making things happen. So, Chris, kudos, and um, I, I, I know you're going far because the, the, the level of engagement that we've had with Chris, I think uh, it's something that I will always recommend. Working with people like Chris makes you feel like uh, you're working with your fellow professional. You're no longer working with a student because this is someone whom you can call anytime. This is someone who can ask anything and then he can deliver. So Chris, he has come in at a point where we needed him the most. And he has stepped in 
to become the leader that the, these students uh, wanted. Apart from Chris, I'd like to mention a couple of people who, who really played in the, 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 the role of the team lead. And not really specifically the team lead, but maybe they were adding specific departments. Uh, Samia, we cannot go without mentioning Samia. She came in with high level of trustworthy integrity into making sure that all the finances are visible. Again, dealing with students, it becomes obvious that they may want handouts here and there. But Samia has ensured that it's very easy and all the finances are working out uh, correctly. Uh, which, which to me, working with a student who is able to do a budget of half a million Kenyan shillings, which is roughly uh, uh, $5,000, is, is really telling me that the vision that I had while I was pioneering more university student branch is really a live vision because for me, I wanted a scenario where a student can do big things without the, without the, the look, uh, without the lecturers really being there to monitor them. And to me, what Samia has really managed to do at that level that she's a fourth year student really tells me that in future, we have leaders who will come in in an engineering sector who can really manage funds without corruption and being accountable to the last coin. Uh, some uh, other two people that I like to mention is uh, Ben Salsi and Beryl uh, Chebet. So Ben Salsi was resource management. So Ben Salsi was responsible in looking into the resources, which is people as well as money, uh, engaging with uh, uh, Samia here and there, but also making sure all the resources, when I mention the resources, name them any resources that we need, Ben has been key into that. Again, I like to recommend Ben uh, because of the work that he has been able to put into this project, specifically in coming out and showing the rest of the team as a fifth year how you can incorporate other people, especially second years, uh, who is Cliff, and guiding him through research among other things. So Ben, kudos and keep working on that. Uh, Beryl, um, uh, being a lady, I've, I've always uh, worked with ladies, but uh, this is someone whom I started working with at the time she was in first year. And seeing her morph to the point that she is, where she's able to, 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 to overlook project development, because she was the lead of project product development, being able to coordinate mechanical, electrical, research, finance, put everyone together, including the management, a bit of it, he's really giving me uh, a very um, a, a very nice moment and feeling joyful of seeing that very little innocent girl in first year who has now moved to become this very responsible women in engineering uh, lady who is able to guide uh, and mentor other ladies in engineering among other people. So to Beryl, I'll say thank you and uh, this comes to the, at the bottom of my heart that uh, you, uh, Samia, you, you've really played a key role in this project and I cannot, I cannot take that for granted as a team lead of this project. I will now go to a specific uh, category in the project wise. So we had Monica, uh, uh, Monica Waswa, who played a key role as a team lead of electrical, uh, electrical, uh, uh, let me call it electrical uh, team. So basically in electrical team, this is a team that was responsible in doing the solar stuff, doing the smart lighting, doing the selection of a smartness of the components. And again, I like how this lady think. This is someone who doesn't take no for an answer. This is someone who doesn't take just yes for an answer. This is someone who questions. Monica is someone who critiques everything. And for me, having such a, such a person in electrical department and in a product development state really gave me some confidence that I could leave anything to the electrical team and I was sure that it will be solved in the best way possible. So um, so Monica, uh, great thanks for guiding uh, young, uh, especially the second years, electrical guys whom you are working with. So that to me really says a lot. And uh, again, you will notice that I'm mentioning more or more uh, into women or rather into ladies because uh, majority of course I'll start now to mention the team members and you realize I'm mentioning men uh, where we have like three or four men in just one team and that's why I'm focusing more into women because again this project it's not only about delivery of the project it was more also about the impact that we are creating even to the team members themselves if you, you need to impact and empower 
those of us who are working in the project before even you think of impacting the community. So we have the internal kind of impact that we are looking into and also the, outside, the out, uh, external kind of the impact that we focused on. So Monica came out uh, uh, so broadly and also so outrageously in a manner that I liked the way she was thinking and the way she was doing things. So Monica, thank you for supporting this team and really making sure that we deliver the smart Kibanda that we had opted for. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll skip the team members a bit and then go to the mechanical, uh, mechanical part. And this is where the magic happens because uh, at the time we started working with Newton, who is a second year uh, currently, but also he is the lead mechanical designer of that project. Initially, uh, I will confess this, being a team lead and having worked with a couple of people, I, find, I found it hard to work with Newton. He was this person who believes in things the way he knows they are supposed to happen that way. And uh, after our first meeting, after two, mini, uh, two, uh, two months into the project, we had a meeting and it was very hard really dealing with him. And not only him, but also making him the leader so that he can lead 50 years and 40 years who are with him. But uh, something which makes me again feel so proud and so happy of even being fortunate to work with this guy is that uh, Newton has grown, Newton has developed to become someone who is now taking lead, taking charge, communicating well, making sure that things are done well. As a matter of fact, the first two units which were deployed, he took uh, more than, I, I can give him like 70, over 70, 60% credit of it because he made sure that he was there during the fabrication stage at each and every level, making sure that each and everything is done to the point that he wanted. So to me, that is the vision that I would like to see.